So um, I haven't flown in nine years. Uh -huh. I've avoided planes. <laughs> um, okay. I have to get on one in three weeks. It's a close to six hour flight. So I'm pretty nervous. And um, I have a what will be an eight month old and a two and a half year old um, that will be flying with me. So, and my husband, um, yeah. but I worry about keeping myself in check in front of them because I don't uh -huh. want them to be scared. Um, and so I started watching the videos. I'm one of those people who has tried other things like uh -huh. hypnosis and therapy yeah. and all of that, but nothing's worked. Well, that um, stuff is not, it, it usually doesn't, so it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, I, I was fearful of other things for a long time, but I've, I've overcome that. And the last big obstacle is, is the airplane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, see, we all have a calming system. It exists at birth, but we can't, you know, a baby can't calm itself. It has to maybe in the next couple of years develop some ability mm -hmm. to automatically calm down. But that automatic calming comes through early relationships and not everybody gets good enough relationships to get the calming system to kick in when you need it. Um, and my thinking is that I wouldn't be so concerned about uh, your response on the plane as I would be concerned about is when you just take care of the kids and, um, and they get upset, are you able to calm them down effectively and, and reliably and consistently? Okay. Because that's, that's where they build in their ability to calm down. They get it from you. Right. Not, and not then that's, plane, you know, that's what not, I worry about yeah. is I hope I can, you know, I can be that for them despite how fearful I am. Yeah, but I, I don't mean on the plane. I mean, in just day-to-day no. -day living. In you know? Yeah. <laughs> You see, when they get upset, what calms them is your face and your voice quality. Oh, yeah, usually giving them a hug, holding them, hug. talking yeah. to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, what, what they need to, to do starting at around a year and a half is when they get upset, start imagining that, that, that you're going to be there in a minute. Mm -hmm. And as they start imagining when you get there, they're going to see your face and hear your voice and feel your touch. Before you get there, the imagination calms them. And then you need to get there and you need to reinforce what they're expecting. You need to present your face. You need to talk to them. You need to give them a hug. But you can see how easy it would be if uh, they started crying and you rest, rushed in and then you saw they were okay to say, hey, come on, you guys, you know, I, I, I was busy and I rushed in here to take care of you and you're fine, so stop it. And you walk <laughs> away. Well, that doesn't reinforce what their expectation right. was, so they don't build in the program. And about 40% of us were in that situation. So part of the strengthening exercise is to find a person in your life who is thoroughly calming to you, at least at times. So do you have a friend who, when you're with them, you let your guard down, uh, both physically and psychologically. That's a tough one. <laughs> somebody who doesn't judge you. It doesn't have to be anybody particularly special. It's easy to kind of overlook someone who's like this because they're kind yeah. of ordinary. They're not, they, don't, they don't impress you. They're just kind of regular people. So it's just somebody who's easy going. Okay. Okay. Got anybody in mind that might work for that? Um, pro yeah, probably. I'm thinking, I'm just curious, like I was actually thinking of a, of a group of people um, that are sort of like a, a support group. Does that work just as effectively or does it make more sense to focus on an individual? I don't think you can pick up signals from the whole group very okay. well. So it's important to kind of single yeah. one person Yeah, out. and maybe you can, maybe you can remember interacting with one person in the group. When it comes to using a group of people, uh, I actually gave it a shot in the strengthening exercise and how it actually worked for me, because all three of these friends are really, really special to me. Thinking of them in a group just 
for me, it didn't really work out that well. But okay. for example, I could visualize the group of people, but then my mind just automatically picked one of them to focus on. These signals come over unconsciously. Um, we don't know we're sending them to other people. We don't know we're receiving them from other people, but it's going on all the time. And, mm -hmm. and you probably know there's some situations where you're not quite sure why, but you just don't feel comfortable. Uh, right. other situations oh, yeah. you, you feel semi-comfortable. You don't feel like running away, but you're not totally relaxed. And, and once in a while, you really luck out and, and you feel just totally fine. And you don't yep. necessarily know why because these signals that are changing how you feel, we're not aware of them. Mm -hmm. You've got a brake pedal on your car and you've got an accelerator pedal on your car. One slows you down, one revs you up. And we want to not get revved up. To keep from getting revved up, we need a situation where you produce oxytocin. Right. When you produce oxytocin, that keeps you from producing stress hormones. We'll talk about what those situations are. Maybe you already know, but not everybody here does. And then the brake pedal, how to activate the brake pedal, the calming system, parasympathetic nervous system it's called technically. And that's coming from another person's face, voice and touch provided it's a person who you feel really comfortable with. And so yeah, finding that comfortable person, that could be tricky. But if you've got that group that you can pick out one person at a time, sort of remember what it's like if you were just talking with them. Pretend that they're okay. holding a photograph of uh, the plane taking off or whatever it is by their face. Then pretend that you're talking it over with them, although you've not done this with them. You can pretend that you're talking over that, what's in that photograph, the subject taking off, talking to them about it. Their calming influence is going into that photograph. And then pretend that they give you a hug. While you're talking about it, they put their arm around your waist and give you a hug. So that's how we link that up. Okay. Oh, and I said I was mm -hmm. going to mention the, the situations produce oxytocin. Nursing a child produces the most of any human experience. Nature's trying to make sure that during nursing, which takes quite a while, that the mom doesn't get uh, anxious that she should do some, something else and stop nursing. The baby wouldn't get the needs. Nourishment needs. I was I, I was reading that in I bought the book as well, so I remember mm -hmm. reading that in the book. Yeah, it's interesting. And then when you Very interesting. this there's a second thing oxytocin does, and that's cause bonding. So when you hold a newborn child, oxytocin is produced to make you feel protective. Males get oxytocin at orgasm so that they become bonded to the female in case there's a child that is developed as a result of this activity, then nature has, is trying to get the guy to stick around. Um, females <laughs> get oxytocin more during foreplay, and both males and females get oxytocin interacting with pets, or when you get a solid hug for 20 or 30 seconds. And you can use any or all of those that you've got that you could, you could link to being on the plane. Okay. And what that does is it, it what that does is it's blocking the accelerator pedal to keep you from getting revved up. 